There are a lot of rumors about what is safe to eat and what could cause a flare-up. Everyone reacts differently, so it's important to work with a nutritionist to determine the best diet for you. Remember that with Crohn's disease, good nutrition is one of the keys to your overall health and growth. Greens are also very important. What vegetables do you use on your sandwich? Pickles. <laughs> Inflammatory bowel disease is as much a disease of nutrition as anything else. In patients who have Crohn's disease, some patients can be treated, at least initially, almost entirely with nutritional therapy. By maximizing nutrition, we can control inflammation, reduce symptoms, and promote growth in a way that equals other forms of medical therapy. Optimizing nutrition is critical to promote development. For good nutrition in Crohn's, we generally give them some guidelines at the time of diagnosis. If you're having problems with growth, if you're having problems with poor weight gain, if you're having continued problems with uh, diarrhea, then we would suggest that they speak with a dietitian. I'm a dietitian that's working with the uh, team. Okay. So what brings you in to see me today? Um, well, I have Crohn's and... My goal is to work with a family to identify growth patterns and nutrition adequacy of their diet because it definitely is an indicator of you know, the health of the child. You know, we're trying to get him to gain some weight. Okay. That's been an issue for When Josh wasn't growing, we spent several visits where Karen tried to increase his nutritional intake. So we got introduced to protein shakes and supplements to increase his caloric intake. So that was extremely helpful. So I want to start with looking at your growth chart. I will get a sense of what their eating habits are like, assess their growth parameters, look at genetic growth potential, um, ask them about supplements they're using, and then compare that to our standards of care for the different vitamins and minerals and make adjustments in their diet based on what I'm finding. Now looking at what your intake is like right now, I've determined that you probably are taking somewhere around 2,000 calories a day, which is pretty good for your age, mm -hmm. but we need to add about 500 extra calories a day to help okay. you with some weight gain, okay. okay? The starting point for any healthy diet is using the food pyramid or to use the dietary guidelines for Americans. And that basically defines the numbers of servings from each of the major food groups that's required to meet nutritional needs. We then begin to individualize what the choices are within the food groups based on symptoms. In reality, you eat differently every day. So if you could keep a food diary, we can look at, at it together and to see if we can meet those calorie goals for weight gain. It's important that the children don't leave out food groups for fear of intolerance, that we can guide them through that process and help them identify those foods and assure that there are other foods that replace those that they feel they're intolerant to. Okay. Any food restrictions you found necessary in the past when you had a flare-up? Well, red meat mm -hmm. sometimes is bad, corn and nuts, obviously. Um, and sometimes like large amounts of red sauce. Okay, anything that's We fine. try to take their lead and see how well they do on different foods. If they're having a flare up, if they have a stricture in their small bowel, we will give them additional guidance of what foods we feel they need to uh, restrict from the diet, but that's only a restriction that lasts as long as there is a stricture in the small bowel. We do recommend you take a vitamin supplement that comes in one package, so to speak, that has the balance of nutrients displayed on the label so you're getting 100% of the RDA for all of them and you're not getting 500% of one and 2% of the other. Because in the real world, these nutrients are balanced in the food that we eat. I googled diet and IBD and I got such a wide variety of recommendations. There may be a role for some of these diets, but they're not proven diets. We will support a family if they truly want to try some of these alternative diets, but we would like them to meet with us and to make sure that when they're following this diet that they don't become uh, calcium deficient or vitamin D deficient and that all the nutrients are in place. Okay, any of these things look like something that would work for you? 
As a dietitian, I try to sit and listen to the issues that arise from these recommendations we make and try to troubleshoot and help them come up with a game plan to make this work for them as best they can. So let's try this and bring back your thoughts and we'll see you in about three weeks. Sounds okay. good. Thank you so much.